What's going on? Danny Crew, it's Danny Drew here, and we are back for another day of Catan. A little bit of a different space, a little bit of a different vibe, but we're still gonna be doing the good old game review, and we've got our man, Donkey Kong, or as he goes, Pokey, you can see him in the chat here, hanging out. And this is gonna be a good one. Uh, Donkey's a really good player. He's improved dramatically from what I've seen over the coming weeks and months. And um, I've been told this is a great game. I mean, I tell them all to send me great games, but uh, I expect very high regards on this one. Now, because Donkey didn't come prepared, which, you know, minus one point for that, uh, he ended up starting the video from his placements, post placements. So, okay, awkward. You know, we can't talk about a board and talk about if this was correct or not. But what we can do is we can reverse engineer the situation and figure out how we got here, okay? All right, so it looks like from this situation, it looks like red went first. Uh, so they took the 5, 8, 10. Uh, well, actually, let's back up. Let's review the board before, you know, before that. And what I always say is I'd like to look at the individual resources of every board. So looking at the wheat, plenty of wheat, very spread out. So everyone's going to get some kind of decent wheat. Awesome. Uh, ore is also pretty plentiful, so you can already tell there's going to be an interesting blend of uh, city drops, potentially development card play. But when you look at the sheep, the sheep's pretty low. So you can kind of get a sense that maybe development cards aren't going to be as prevalent, but the city and road game could be. Let's look at the brick. So brick is kind of clumped. You know, we do have Mr. 693 over here. Good choice, pink. Uh, so this player is going to definitely dominate the brick, and then you've also got the 91011 player dominating the brick. Interesting. Okay, so two players are going to have decent brick to work with. And I'd say the wood is relatively spread out. Kind of feels like three to four players are going to get the wood. Uh, so what I see here is a board where you're going to have kind of like a heavy city road game, essentially. And, you know, we call this like four cities longest road. Uh, but the player who's going to buy development cards, potentially eight, four, three player, is actually at a pretty interesting advantage. So if they can pick up a better weed on the way back here, which... Uh, looks like they did. They got a nice little setup. This player is going to have a great game on ter in terms of devs here. So, all right. So we kind of got a sense of the board here. First position, 8, 5, 10. I think it makes sense. Good ore, good wheat, picks up a wood. Um, and there's a lot of different outs on the way back. You know, something with the brick works great. And then it goes to blue, who goes in the middle of the board, 6, 5, 11. Also, another good pick, right? Or we cheap in a box. Makes a lot of sense. So Donkey, you went third here. What did you choose? I'm going to make a guess. Um, here in third, you took the eight, four, 10. But I, to be fair, I can also see the six, nine, three and just say brick dominance, but the eight, four, 10 is picking up uh, the wheat wood. Like it's a, it's a good combo here and there's a lot of outs. You took the six, nine, three. Okay, so six, nine, three, and then black goes back to back here. This makes a lot of sense. This is a fantastic setup. Uh, which maybe I think this is one thing when you're in third is you can usually calculate with a pretty high certainty What fourth's going to do so I think this is like this makes sense a lot of time fourth is going to take this setup It's good or we cheap and then he sees that he can take the eight four ten. I actually really really like this decision from him because First of all, he's got all five resources, which I like some people don't like it. I think it's great He's got a beautiful road network. So this is what we call side by side variation Two. So instead of being two roads apart, you're three roads apart, but no one can place in between your roads. So I really like that. And um, he's got one of the rare resources, right? He's got a ton of brick here. So this can have some trade value and the brick port. All of it. Perfect. Perfect. I think, I think you saw the board well here, Donkey, and you placed well. So I love it. And that's where the game starts. 693 because of his cards. Every out was good with the 693. I agree. I agree, and I, I think for you to see the, the double brick sheep as a good third pick, uh, I think that's great on you. I don't know if a lot of people would. I think a lot of people would gravitate towards the ore, but then you end up giving fourth this amazing setup. Uh-oh, hold on. So from that standpoint, good board awareness. 8410 is such a nice second placement as well. Oh yeah, it's perfect, absolutely perfect. All right, so this is pretty much where we start. This is where we start. Let's get your engines running here. Now, it looks like blue is the next pick. What does he take here? What do you guys like here as blue? Um, it's got some interesting options. I'm not opposed to something like, he could go 9, 10, 11 and lock, lock this situation, 
but his road settles aren't great, right? He's got one settle on the 612. So the question for him is, is he going to try to open up the board, like 9, 4, 11 up, and try to get one of these three hex spots? Because um, I think one of the considerations there is maybe Bread might take the 6, 3, 11 if you leave it. Um, I can see a lot of players taking the 9, 10, 11, honestly. I can see them taking the starting road, um, locking the board a little bit, but it's not really good as an all wheat sheep player. Typically, you want to get at least two additional settles, and ideally, you want one of them to be at a port. So he could also even consider like the 9, 10, 2 right. Actually... That's pretty interesting. Okay. See, this is like years of experience playing against these level players. I could just see this happening, right? Like they just want the starting road. So I think for, let me just pause real quick. I think for blue there, the better play is the 9, 10, 2 right. Um, now it does, it does give the 9, 4, 11 to red, which is maybe problematic. But I do think the fact that he opens up a three hex spot for him, really good. And I, honestly, I don't know if Reddy would even take it. Like, I think Red's going to go 6-3-11 anyways. So that feels like a slight missed opportunity from Blue. Uh, take the 9-10-2 and point right. Now he's like, he's got one road settle. It's not to a port. It's just, it's a clunky setup. So I'd be very surprised if Blue wins this. Yes, I got a new place. I got a new place. Um, by the way, I don't have all my furniture in here, so I'm literally sitting on the floor. It is what it is. Deal with it. At least for uh, the case of tonight. Uh, what's Pokey's objectives, right? So if we're looking at Donkey Kong setup here, I always generally say there's two main objectives for most setups, which is to get Road Settle to a good port um, and then try to build a city early. Now the question is, does he ever go for the 3-1 or the brick port? Personally, I like taking the 3-1 away from Black because I think Black actually has a pretty decent game on Orweet Sheep. So by limiting Black's potential, um, it does make their game a little bit more difficult. And plus, settle spots are great, right? He needs speed, and he's got speed with Road Settle, Road Settle, Road Settle, Road Settle, Longest Road City. Like, uh, this is a great setup. And I also like the fact that when you Road Settle on the 10, you double your ore production on this roll. So um, I know the Brickport looks fancy, but he's going to get there soon enough. So let's see how he plays this. Actually, I don't need my headset. I don't know. Uh, don't have music playing. Okay. So this is going to be the moment of truth. Does Donkey go for the 10 ore? He's pointing at the brick. Oh, no, maybe not. Maybe not. So for Blue, the question is, does Blue go for a port here? Like, for instance, does he drop a road? I think he should. The 3 one's really good for Blue. If you settle on the 10 ore, basically you have that entire part of the board to yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Like, the beautiful thing, like, when you're playing road, which is kind of what he's playing for long term. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Let's see what he does. Oh, pokes. No, this is not, this is, you know, the interesting thing about Catan. It's not like one play is wrong or bad, necessarily. You can have, like, levels of optimization. It's, I mean, this is still a perfectly fine play. The brick port's amazing. Uh, but I do like doubling the 10, personally, and also just kind of, hampering black a bit but we'll see we'll see all right perfect so now he's 60 percent to a city and we see the first city come down this is massive massive here for uh our boy black the city goes down all right that's pretty good now the question is can we get a trade here so i know he's probably going to try to trade see in my in this situation i'd be looking for the wheat for sure and I think there's some utility with selling the brick. I think what he could get away with is a road. A road for wheat. It's a pretty good trade. Um, these or wheat sheep players will appreciate this. Like, black would like that trade. Now, if he can't get a trade, chat, what should Donkey do here? Right? Let's say he has got a... He, Mm, not good. I uh, thought doubling the wood was better for the road play. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, there's a decent amount of wood here, so I feel like you can always make trades for wood. Uh, like, that's one thing, like, the one thing that will change your Catan game is not thinking about your setup, 
in isolation, but realizing you're playing the entire board. So all these resources are in play, right? The nine wood can be your wood. The 10 wood can be your wood if the price is right. <laughs> so, um, uh oh, Pokey, you better not be messing around here. Sheep for not block. Yeah, that's interesting. So now we've got to figure out how to clean up your hand here, Pokey. Now, I do think, uh, one thing I just want to note, that previous turn, Pokey, you, sh you could have dropped a road, right? You were at six cards. Uh, and you have an amazing production. Uh, just be aware of that. Like, don't, don't be scared to drop roads. Like, you're, you'll roll wood, you'll roll brick, just like you have here. So big part of the road game is not setting out and manage your hand properly. So that's a situation where not, you're on six cards, I would just drop the road potentially to the 3-1 on the ore and passed. So instead of being at six, you're at four cards. It's easier to manage that way. Uh, would you drop a road there or hold? And hold since it's no... Well, yeah, on the previous orbit, I would have definitely... Um, I would have definitely dropped the road. Because you're, you're building roads anyways, right? So, like, why take the risk? Ooh, this is... Well, the problem is here, Pokes, your ore doesn't really have a lot of value. So just looking at the situation, like, look at the, all the ore. Now, I think your brick could have value because there's a lot of wood on this board. Um, but I don't think your ore has value. So I think you got to be shifting some of this brick I don't even know if they're sheep, brother. Actually, I don't think they're sheep at all. Actually, Black might have one because he didn't buy a dev. And Blue has one, right? Or no, he popped a dev unless the 11 rolled. I think just dropping the road here is fine. And I'm perfectly, honestly, perfectly okay. Black has no devs. Uh, going to the 3 1 of the 10. Oh, he accepted it. Oh, pokey. There you go. Pokey, pokey, pokey. I hope you're not switching screens too often here. So, I want, I want you guys to be aware of something here. You've got to know what you're going to do before your turn starts, right? Um, if you ever watch me play, I'm always anticipating my moves. I'm anticipating the trades, and I always have to come up with like a, a secondary plan if my trades don't go through. You can't be waiting till the last second because that's where like you know you start getting your nerves. So I think there, Pokey, you've just got to be like think a little bit further ahead. And um, you know sometimes I know like you you want to like take on a lot. I've seen the way you play sometimes, but uh, you got to be anticipating your 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 turn essentially. Like you should never be passing with eight cards, and for this exact reason. And I want it to be known too, if you drop the road on the previous orbit, you'd be at seven cards and not nine. So all these decisions have like butterfly effects, right? Like if you just managed your hand properly the two orbits ago, you wouldn't have been in this position. I know, I know that seems obvious, but it's like, you gotta think about your game long term. I think you gotta, you gotta try to build the city here. That's, yeah, unfortunately you gotta drop the roads. That's, that's probably what I would do, just knowing how much brick and wood I have here. Brutal seven. Brutal seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I, I don't know why, but people don't talk about hand management enough. It is, it's probably like, in the, the scheme of, of Catan, it's probably like 5 to 10% of like the overall skill conversation. You'll never get this trade, by the way. You'll never get that trade. But um, hand management is like one of the biggest things that you have to be aware of. All right, a four would be great, an eight would be great, a date with an eight. Let's see it. Yeah, see, this is crazy trades, crazy trades. All right, brutal seven. I still think you're in a great position, and from a pacing perspective, you're great here. Like, I don't think you really get blocked much. Okay, Pokey. You know, when you're, when you're a good player, you don't have to worry about people's win rates. You know what I mean? You just play the game, brother. 
It is helpful though uh, to look at other people's accounts sometimes just to get a sense of potential strength. I don't do it too often, but um, maybe if I think I'm against like a super tough table, I might want to look at some players in a more nuanced fashion. Okie dokie, roll a four. You didn't get a four, you didn't get a wood. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. So unfortunately, the timing of this whole, of these trades have been pretty bad for you. Now, you could try the brick for wheat. The brick, like, the brick has utility here. So, like, at least try the brick for wheat. No, oh, no, don't ever do that. You could also pass here. Like, six cards is not horrible, but your production is good enough that I could see you rolling, <laughs> yeah, into eight cards. It's probably going to happen. All right. Come on, we need some rolls here. We need a four. We need to drop a city. Hey, hey, that's good. That's good. I think we could probably even sell that sheet for one of the wheats. Yeah, yeah. So he's going to edit this for the wheat for sure. It's a great trade. I like checking win rates. Knowledge is power. Sometimes, but you know what? Like, it could be, especially early in the season, it could be a little deceptive uh, where win rates and... and all that ELO can be completely out of whack. At the end of the day, it shouldn't change the way you play. You know what I mean? All right. All right, donks. I'd, say, I'd, I'd try to get a wheat here, personally. Yeah, it's a little bit greedy, especially with Blue's wheat being blocked. But if you can get one for one, that's pretty good. Okay, all right. No! Oh, there was a trade. There was a trade there for the wheat. Okay, okay. All right, so let's go back. Let's go back. So... So one thing for you, Donkey, and I've said this so many, so many times, slow down, brother. Why the race? Like, let's see how fast you took that turn. Let's see. Boy is Lightning McQueen over here. Jeff Gordon, look at this. Rolls immediately. Even be, like the, the wheat hasn't even hit the cards yet. And he, look, <laughs> the wheat hasn't even hit the hand yet. And he's about to drop the settle. Boom. Take your time. <laughs> Like, let the cards enter people's hands. Um, yeah, it's like, what's the rush, right? L look, look for opportunities, look for trades. You're much better in that situation, trading for the wheat, dropping the city, clearing the ore. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to get this ore mono. Look how much ore is on the board. So, like, if you don't drop a city and this guy pulls a mono, you're cooked. You're cooked. Everyone see that? So, it's like... Like, for instance, wheat for brick, you could do that trade, I think, in a lot of cases, potentially with this guy. He's got a decent amount of wheat now in his hand. Uh, so take your time. Don't rush. No rush at all. Okay. Sorry. Pokey always tweaking. Isn't black so far ahead now? Yeah, so I'll be surprised if you get this trade. I don't think you will. But now, now like... It's a little bit of an awkward hand for you now. Oh, so you're not rolling the force. So after, after this play, what we'll do is we'll see if we can assess the board. Uh, one for one's a little bit more reasonable, but the thing is, ooh, that's not bad. I'm almost tempted to say take, take the wheat because then the chances of you building the city are much greater. Yeah, I mean, you could always trade it. So let's take a pause. Let's actually assess the board. So this is something I usually recommend to do as you move through the phases of the game to kind of take stock of where everyone's at, who are the threats, what are the things you need to be worried about. You know, if you anybody does TSI in the near future, um, we, I mean, we have an entire module dedicated to assessing the middle game and figuring out who's a threat, who has opportunities, and so forth. So Black. Black's doing extremely well. Huge production. Uh, double cityed here, uh, unblockable ore, unblockable wheat, best sheep. Yeah, black's in a great position. The challenge for black here is they don't have any devs. So as much as they are a favorite to probably go for army, they are lacking, like blue does have some kind of pacing on them. Now, I don't know. We'll see what these are here soon, you know, with the, the knight being on blue. So these could be two non-knights, which is kind of interesting. But black's definitely doing well. Red's also doing well, uh, too, now that they've picked up the sheep. 
they can pivot to uh, devs. They have all five resources. They have some great ports here. Honestly, I think I would take red over black. I would definitely take red over black here. Uh, I just think they've got a slightly better game. They've got the road network. They've doubled the 11. They've doubled the 10. They got the 3-1, the wheat port. Uh, or port's already live. Yeah, I like red here much more than black. And then blue is in probably dead last place. Yeah, red doing well here. To me, red was the biggest threat. For sure, for sure. And the thing is, the problem is, because you're the road player, that blue... I don't know how blue gets in this game. I, I think they were dead from placements. It's like one, one placement mistake can cost your game. And I think the 9, 10, 11 left was the mistake. Uh, red can take road. And from your standpoint, he's going to be a big problem for you because if black goes for devs, red's going to definitely start going for road because that's his easiest path. So you definitely want to minimize red's ability to go for road and, and maybe force him into a dev game potentially. All right, but let's keep moving here. I think from an objective standpoint here, Donkey, you've got to build the city this turn. You can't, like, you can't wait any longer. You're falling behind in production. Uh, the ore in your hand could be vulnerable to a mono. Uh, maybe, maybe not. But I'm getting a little concerned that you're just going to fall behind. So like, if you can maybe roll the weed and make a trade, awesome. Maybe you can get a couple brick rolls and make a trade. It feels like that sheep for wheat's probably on the table in a lot of cases, just given how valuable the, the sheep is. Is the city placement obvious for you? Well, it's, it's a tough one here because now that the brick port's live, there's kind of utility to both. I kind of like the 8410 though, just because, yeah, see, see, I think taking this away from black was, was a better idea, by the way, Pokey. Um, you're just giving black more life. Now red's cooking. Jesus. But with the brick port, the brick port's interesting. But I think potentially doubling your wheat production and doubling your ore production, I think that gets him his second city faster, which is definitely a priority here. All right, yeah. Now black, one of the issues too, red has most of the wheat, but because of their port play, they're very self-sufficient here. Okay, so we got the knight. Ugh, the hand is ugly. The hand is ugly, brother. 693 is monster, really? It's good, man. It's good, but I mean, for instance, with your current hand, if you can drop a city this turn, 1-4 one, and 110, you roll the next city. Versus, like, you would need 6-6-6-6-9, six, 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 right? Like, the utility of the 4 and the 10 are really strong here if you can get a city on it. And then, like, the next city comes on the 693, and all of a sudden, like, you're going crazy with road settles. I think the 8410 plays a little bit better. I really do. So, essentially, if you 8410 city, you just need 1 4 to roll, or like a 10 4. But 693 is good, too. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all good. You just need a city. And I think you miss that opportunity. Uh, when you like spam this settle down, I, I'm almost certain you missed the opportunity there. Drop the city. Yeah, red is cooking, cooking. Yeah, he's gonna go for the wheat trade. There's no way, zero chance, zero chance. Maybe like a 10% chance now. You gotta. Oh, there we go. 10%. We take it. We'll take it. Nice. Watch the four and the the four and the ten are gonna roll. Okay, okay. It's very serendipitous now. Very serendipitous. All right. So big city six nine three. Um, the sheep has been doubled. Now every six and nine are a free card. I like it. I like it. Though also, I don't think the four is rolled here, which is absolutely insane. There it is. Told you. So you'd, you'd have two ore and two wheat. Should have put it on the four, bro. You, you'd be a roll away from a city. I don't want to plot black. Wanted him to buy devs and yeah. Well, in hindsight, the way this game's gone uh, with red kind of just really taking off. Yeah, maybe I can understand you want uh, black to put as much pressure on red as possible. But also, like, I think if black 
bought a couple of devs early, you know, maybe because the four was that's the thing with black setup because the four didn't roll until right then and there, they didn't have any sheep. So it's tough. It's tough. Like if you don't get the sheep roll, you know, you drop the cities, you pace really hard, you start getting blocked. Uh, yeah, I don't want to depend on the two ones unless you have to, but you have a great orange wheat there and the bricks. Yeah, yeah, I mean, honestly, both spots are amazing. Uh, I mean, I don't think, yeah, maybe. I think there might have been, a, again, I think like banking on the four and 10. So we're in a situation now where if we get, oof. Eleven's a nasty roll. Here we go. Black gets the pops going. Luckily, I think for red, the block's probably always the five. Um, five's a big roll here. Even the, you know, the one thing too for red, the four is not a bad block. Um, it does really stop the devs from black. Like, I'd argue the four probably does a little bit more for black than it does for red, but no, he'll never do that. Yeah, he'll block the five, which I think is reasonable. Let me check the chat here. Hold on, hold on. Um, but the, you need road tools to fight red, double in the wood and breaks the roads. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I mean, I think we've got a little bit of time. We're not quite in the scare mode quite yet. And frankly, too, uh, I mean, we haven't had a lot of wood and brick rolls. But we do got a, a pretty solid connect. I think long term donkey should get road here, but it's getting dicey. It's getting dicey for sure. Like red is speeding ahead. Oh, oh, that's a good trade. Oh no, maybe not with red though. Putting on. Uh, I mean, it's a free card, right? Yeah, I would do this. I would do this. I, I think the trade's just too good, and he'll probably give it to you. How far behind you are. So, like, for instance, if it just gives him action, I think he'll take it. Ooh, the pop. Okie dokie, pokey. Okay, all right. Good, 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 good. So now every, practically every roll, eight gives city, four gives city, ten gives city, nine gives city, six gives city, Three gives us road settle, but we still want city. And blue is gone. Pokey, don't, don't tell me. Don't tell me you gave us a bot game. Do you ever go for the wood port with two uh, road materials right now? Where the hell is the wood port? Dude, you're, you're getting uh, some pretty tough pulls here, man. Yeah, we need a... Uh, we need us another city here. Uh, Woodport's probably not your best bet. I think you need to focus on your fast points. So that's the one thing that makes road vi um, viable is what we call fast points, right? So the ability to road settle, road settle, road settle, road settle, you know, drop some roads to connect uh, versus like going up to the wood port. You've the thing is the wood's always going to be actionable given the amount of brick that you have. Oh, oh, buys a dev. So let's 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 go back here. How do we feel about this play, guys? Pokey looks at his hand and he ports for the sheep, it looks like. Do we like it? Do we not like it? Let's get some feedback. I think I would have dropped a road and passed there. I think that's better. I think what Donkey needs to do here, like what's Donkey's problem right now? Well, he's got multiple problems, but there, there's actually like a really, really big problem. And I mean that in a couple different senses of the phrase. The biggest problem for him is he's getting murdered on production. Like if you look at black, black's got devil city, red's got devil city, devil settle, going to a, a you know, with multiple two one ports and a three one incoming. Like, this is not a time for you to start popping. You don't have the production to afford that. So you need to either get your city or you need to get some efficiency through a better port. Popping devs, that's not the way right now. Now, of course, if he pulls a Monopoly, sure. Okay, like he looks like a genius. 
but that's only two out of 25 cards are going to pull Monopoly. So I think better was to drop the road and try to build the city next turn. But by popping, you just you limit your chances of building the city, right? Because you now you need another series of rolls because you, you there goes all your wheat and you pull a knight, uh, which is not ideal. But not a lot of knights have been played. Here we go. I would port for the wheat dropper. I like that play. I think it's good. In this situation, the wheat's always good. Right, so so, yeah, you have also would have limited your hand too, Donkey. So like, if you ported for the weed and, and dropped a road, as an example, you would have the city this turn. Okay, well, don't get monitored by the bot. That'd be embarrassing. Well, actually, the bot did something good. Holy smokes! Okay, what do we do with this hand? Interesting, he's going for the wood, huh, 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 huh. Oh, what are we doing, what are we doing? He's going for the connect, okay. Um, I guess what's the rush here? I, honestly, I like the city, dude. I know it's kind of expensive because you're porting your life away. Also, you could, you could potentially pl put a robber on red. Like one, one play you can make here, This is maybe not a bad deal. Because I think you still have enough for a city. I think I would drop the city with the remaining cards. And hold the wood. Where are you going, brother? Where are you going? Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So, let's think about the butterfly effect again here. Um, remember he didn't manage his hand properly. It cost him a seven out. So he lost, you know, four cards there. Um, he's had some efficiencies here. I think, man, if you went for the city the previous turn, right? Like we talked about the port, you would have the eight, four, 10 city. Now you might even have the eight, four, 10 city plus the road settle, right? Like you could potentially be on six points and then connecting the next orbit. Like road's not the biggest threat right now. Like red doesn't have any wood. Um, you shouldn't be too threatened by the road situation. Like, versus, like, road settling on the three. Like, what are you porting, right? Like, you've already got the brick port. The wood's always going to be actionable with the brick. So the three one, it doesn't do anything for you. Maybe if you get a flurry of threes, you're going to port all that sheep, maybe. But the three one functionally doesn't help you. So, again, like... Get your production up. Like, get your production in the game so you can fight these juggernauts that have multiple cities and multiple settles. Like, road's not a threat right now. Now, you could drop some roads here. I think, like, maybe if you want to clear your hand, maybe road, road to the 6-2 is an option so that you could start to, like, work the road network. Ooh, Interesting. Double interesting. You know, one thing you could consider blocking here, if you're concerned about red long term, you could even consider the 10, right? Because the 10 does stop his wood production. So like road becomes less of a problem for him. But the four is good. Um, the 11 is really big for him, right? Three bricks, pretty scary. But the 10 is a decent block. And I think at this point, black is pretty far behind still. Uh, okay, so you stole from black. All right, so you're going to the dev deck still. You don't want to build that, you don't want to build that city, but okay, okay. What's going on here? Wanted to try and lock out, uh, lock red out of army. Um, this feels, I mean, you might be able to get army here, Pokey, but it feels like a losing battle to me. It really does. But okay, let's see how it happens. I mean, you are pacing. You are pacing army, technically, but I just don't know if this is the best way for you to play. Right here, the 11 hits. The 11 hits, right? Like, these are the rolls. Yeah, I'm more concerned about red here, man. I, I think, like, trying to hit black there, 
Like you're only going to piss them off and you're like you're going against your best win condition, which is to build roads. Uh, you do get a sheep here. You get a sheep here. Okay, you see it. I think I would go for it. Empty, empty your hand. Guaranteed sheep, and you get a road settle on the six. Yeah, nice. <laughs> He's going for devs again. Yeah, I guess you could. I guess you could. Road settle's pretty clean. He's going to pop for sure. He's going to pop. Oh. All right, all right. So let's, let's, let's take a pause real quick. Hindsight, yeah. You lose long battle. Well, what, what Pokey is going to try to do here, essentially he's creating a window. So the... Want to be smart, Pinky. Essentially what he's going to try to do is set up a double play, right? He's going to get army. He's going to get road. He's going to maybe pull a VP for his final point. It's just not a big window for you. And frankly, like, you've got some problems here. If you're not building roads, red might just win with three roads. So, I don't... I feel like you're just you're going down the middle of the road, man, and you're not actually picking a lane. And I don't, I don't like that for you here. So, we'll see if it pays off, but I really don't like it. And now, like, you, you run the risk with your, the way you play that hand. Like, if you don't pull a knight, and now this guy hits you because you're going for his army, like, you're doubly screwed. So, yeah, I just, I think it's a bad win con for you. Like, your setup is built for roads. Your setup, it's all about roads. It's the side-by-side -side variation, too. I think the plan is the issue. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And you just got to know, like, you're better going in with the focus. Now, he could get army. It's not impossible. But at what cost, right? So now, Red's in a position where if he rolls a 10, he he's probably wins the game. If he has a mono, oh my god, okay. I don't, that's a pretty crazy situation for him. Okay, okay. Pokey's going for the double play. We like this trade. We love that trade. We take that trade. And by the way, Pokey, um, that works. That works. Uh, so let's, let's, let's take a moment. By the way, you would even do better on devs if you sit at the 8410, right? Like if you think about the consequence of the way you played some of those prior orbits, if you just put the city on the 8410 when you when you wanted to, like you'd be probably doubling twice as uh doubling, deving twice as much at this point. So these are just things you gotta be aware of. Uh you're kind of in a position where you probably want to pop now because of the army situation. Uh, you technically have two pops in hand, right? So one thing you could do is you could use the op. You could also hold it because you just have a pop straight up. I like potentially going like or sheep here, popping a dev. The sheep's always good. All right, what is he doing? Okay, so he holds it. I don't, I don't mind this. The one thing though is if he pulls... Okay, perfect. So now I actually think, yeah, yeah, exactly. So now he's got to go for the, the knight so he can double play. All right, all right, all right. All right, so he's going for the window here, right? This is what I talked about. This is exactly what he needs. He needs to be able to create a window where he gets like a VP or an extra road settle. Um, and then now he's got the knight for eight. Then he connects for road. It's working so far. It's working so far. He also cleared his hand, so black one in the card. And I'm assuming red probably has a knight, given the recent devs that have been pulled. Unfortunately, though, he can't block you, donkey. Pretty good. Pretty good. You need some rolls here. You need some eights. And unfortunately, now donkey's in a position where he's got to play a knight this turn, right? Because um, if he wants to get pacing... Which actually makes him a monster target. Um, so hold on, let me, uh, I'll catch up with Chad here. Butterfly effect, the 1% becomes 20%. It's so true, it's so true. And this is the one thing that people don't understand about like really, really good players that have like immense board awareness. They understand the consequence of those 1% moves, 
right? So like for a lot of players, they discredit and be like, well, okay, whatever, right? Maybe I made a little mistake or didn't manage my hand properly, but there's consequences to it. Like that city in the 8 4 10 and the way you could have played that pokey, honestly, you probably could have won the game by now. I'm not even joking. Um, but, you know, you live and you learn. But you do, you do have a window here. I don't know if you have winning rolls. Uh, you don't. Maybe if you can get a trade here, maybe a winning steal. Like if you can get two cards here, I think that's amazing. Yeah, I like it. Or maybe like a sheep and a wood, sheep, sheep and a brick. Like I'd go, f I'd go for two cards here. Like get aggressive. Yeah, I need to survive orbit. This is, so this is what we call playing for a window. Now, he still has a good game, but the problem is once his window closes, he's probably in a ton of trouble. Right, so for instance, like if he can't hold army, then red probably just wins with road, right? Because he's instead of like Pokey saying, I'm gonna put all my effort into roads and win that game, uh, I'm going to try to win both of them, but maybe at like 70%. It's risky, man. And now blue, okay. I don't like the four here. I, th I think the four is not the block. I mean, the eight's a monster role on this board, man. And the thing is, you need the eight to win anyways. Yeah, I think that's a mistake. Though you do have a pop, which is good. Okay. All right, all right. So we, we lived the final day. But here, here's the problem. Here's the problem right here. Look what just rolled, right? Like, the problem is, is you're, you're dealing with one threat, but you're not dealing with the other threat, right? So by you hitting the four, you're like, okay, I'm going to minimize devs. Devs are not your problem right now. You need a secure road. <laughs> um, and the only person that's going to be doing that is either red or blue against you. So I talked about this a little earlier, like potentially hitting the wood to slow down red. And it's just like, there it rolls, right? And with him with multiple devs, I mean, he might even just have the win in his hand. Like I, he might just have the win in his hand. For instance, mono brick, I think wins the game. Roll in a mono wins the game for red here. 10 should have been the block. Yeah, yeah. You've already got army, right? Like you're playing for the window. So what you have to do now is you have to switch the defensive aspect on road. Because if you lose road, you definitely lose the game. Not definitely, but... Um, well, yeah, I guess technically if red takes road, you lose the game. So from that standpoint, the four doesn't do a damn, damn thing. Now I wonder if he's going to hit red here. I think he has to hit red. And I think he actually has to hit something like the 11. The wheat's good. Um, the 11's losing straight up. The 5's probably losing as well. Mono's losing. Um, any brick roll plus mono's losing. Like, this is pretty tough here. Called it. Called it, man. There it is. That is game 110%. It's got to be game. Absolutely has to be game. There, there's actually, this was a great game, Donkey, because there's some, some serious lessons here. Uh, I like, I appreciate the sentiment of trying to go for the double play and creating the window. And frankly, like you probably could have done it, but you played in a suboptimal way that I think really hurted your chances there. Um, like if you're going to go for double play, like, so let's see, let's go look at some, yeah, the 10s were a monster, by the way. And the one thing I'm going to tell you what did, I, what did I say was Pokey's problem here? Like, remember, like, when we were in, like, the middle of the game? I said he had, a, he had a specific issue against this board. Production, for sure. So when we look at the dice rolled stats and the resource score, it's going to be absolutely stacked against him. And at the end of the day, dude, you better go to... Oh, you didn't even go to the resource score? Oh, brother, you're killing me. Well, all I know is, I know for a fact he got cooked on production. I don't even need to look at the resource score. Um, yeah, man. So I think a couple key takeaways. The butterfly effect of some of your decisions, right? Like when you're playing road, be willing to drop roads, right? Like it's okay. Don't seven out. You can't afford to seven out as a road player. It is absolutely brutal. Also, take your time. When you have three or four in your hand, the city should be the logical play there, right? Like building a city, like when you like snap down this settle right here, I think that's the wrong thing. Like doubling one of these hexes versus simply activating the brick port, 
is way more impactful. I hope you understand that. Um, like, for instance, if you got the city on the 8410 or even the 693, uh, the settle's going to come next orbit anyways. So, uh, like, have your hand kind of tell you what you need to do. You, you're, most of your hand is ore here. <laughs> I like the window play, though, Donkey. I like it, but at the same time, I think if he doubles down on the roads, he locks road. Um, essentially, he can put himself in a position where red has to build to 10. He can get longest road. He can give black army, potentially. Like, I don't think he needs army here. I think he can city city, get his road settles really quickly, connect for road, go to Woodport. That's probably, honestly, the better balancing move versus trying to do this double play, and now you have to fight black, and you have to fight red, and you're losing both battles long term. It, the production didn't make sense, but it, fair enough. Like, you, you create a window, you go for it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, right? But um, I think, Pokey, if you review this and you look at all those like little suboptimal plays from your standpoint, you can definitely see the butterfly effect, right? Like the, all those moments that you miss that like cost you an orbit or two or cost you potentially a city. And uh, yeah, man. But overall, I think there's a lot of great examples here, a lot of good insights, and you got close. You, you needed probably some better rolls and some of the previous orbits, but hey, you live and you learn. There's no bad feelings here, uh, Donkey. I think you played this well. You definitely placed perfectly. Like the 6-9-3 and 3rd, I don't think a lot of players would take that. And honestly, like the 8-4-3 is also good too. Uh, well, 8-4-3 could work, but I like the 6-9-3. I, like, I think it's just a better game. But you picked a, an amazing road setup and you started buying devs. And I think that's where you went wrong. I think if you double down a road, uh, you get your production to be adequate, you probably win army and road at that point anyways, right? So I think just those missteps of not going for those city plays probably cost you the game.